Here's a photo of myself. I'll say, who is this person? A man with short dark hair and a round face. Okay. Today, we're going to be taking a look at two new small vision language models from Liquid. Now, these were actually released last week, and I want to test these on lower power and edge devices, as that's what these are touted to be very performant at. They are notably quite fast, and I will say their actual the shows capabilities the are impressive. So, the man has short dark brown hair and is wearing a pink shirt. He's looking directly at the camera with a slight smile. The microphone is positioned in front of him suggesting he's recording or broadcasting. In the background, there's a green and white painting visible, which appears to be a mural or abstract artwork. So as I was saying, I wanted to test these on real edge devices, and what we just saw right there is the 450 million parameter, or the smallest variant of these models, and the level of detail that it picks up is really quite impressive when you consider that what this is running right here is Bob, by the way, which some of you are familiar with, is on a Raspberry Pi, and this is a Q8 quantization of the 450 million parameter model. So not only is it actually really relatively quick considering the hardware it's running on but beyond that it is actually very good at picking out details in images that are like kind of not the best so with that we're going to start by just taking a quick brief look at the blog post about these models and then we'll go ahead and jump into some testing on both a lower end laptop gpu and then a raspberry pi 5. So as we can see from this announcement post, there were two models released in this family, and these are called Liquid Foundation models. Um, I will maybe not correctly refer to them throughout the duration of the video, but just keep in mind that's what I mean if I do say the wrong terminology. With that, we can see that there are two sizes, a 450 million parameter and a 1.6 billion parameter designed for resource-constrained environments, meaning things that have low power or like not a lot of VRAM basically, or no VRAM and just CPU to run on like in the instance of the Raspberry Pi. With that, they talk about a little bit of some of the features here and things like that, where the native resolution processes at 512 by 512 in terms of the actual image dimensions, but there is patch-based handling, meaning that if the image is larger than that, it can kind of put it into smaller pieces or slices or patches and then go ahead and be able to see it. Now, something I find interesting in this is if we look down at the architecture, it do actually send at the same time. So here's a bigger image basically, and the tiled patches that they mentioned, I apologize, I'll kind of zoom in a little. Oh, that didn't really seem to make a difference. That's good. So the larger image gets kind of cut into these tiled patches, but they also send a global thumbnail, which they mentioned down here is just like a really small downscaled version of the original image capturing the overall scene to enhance global context understanding. So basically not only does it see the pieces of a larger image, but it can actually see a small version of the entire image, which would definitely help it understand not just what is in the image, but kind of the environment in which the image was taken, which it could then use to draw conclusions, like how seeing these cows are on a beach or something of the sort. So that is just really kind of interesting and something I wanted to make specific note of as having that little thumbnail was at least interesting to someone like myself who's interested in this stuff. And you can see here that they did just put these out in GGUFs as well, and Llama CPP support is now available for this, which is how I am running it on the Pi. Um, if that makes sense to you, then you may be interested in knowing that. If it doesn't, then we can just kind of move on to the next section, which is just some additional pertinent information. Basically, the context for these models are 32,768. Now with that, I want to just go ahead and actually start testing this. For today's video, subscribe. So here we can see that I have a little vibe coded web interface set up to actually run this on my laptop, which we can see up here is a 4060 mobile, which is an eight gigabyte laptop GPU. Right now, this is showing around 4.8 gigabytes of video RAM utilization. I do want to make specific note that one, I am using screen recording software that will add about 1.5 gigs of overhead to that. So just subtract 1.5 from that when we actually run this to get like the general amount. And two, you may think that's a lot for a 1.6 billion parameter model, but I am not using the newly uploaded working GGUFs. I am just using the model as we see it right here in this specific um, section. So it is BF16, which just unscientifically means it will take up more VRAM than one may expect a model of its size to. So folks may want to use this themselves. I noticed it was kind of a pain to get working in a Gradio web interface. So I will put this up on GitHub for anyone if the video does get 500, no, I'm kidding. I'll put the link in the description.
So let's just go ahead and start by uploading an image and then asking it about it. So this image right here is of course the mighty Toshiba Quasmio laptop which does sit on a shelf behind me. I do very much like to stare at it. I am going to minimize that real quick, okay? So let's just go ahead and ask what is this? And before I do that, I will open back up the NV top. And the thing I want to make note of that surprised me is look how fast that response actually came through. And that's not what I was expecting when I first tested this. I know it's a really small model, but vision models are usually a bit slower, at least in the ones that I've played with in the past. So it is really quite impressive. And we see we got a relatively kind of basic response here, just telling us about the actual scene, if you will. But I noticed that I played with this earlier and it did actually say this was a Toshiba laptop, which was quite surprising. So I'll try to get that answer out of it again. I accidentally closed the web chat interface, but the conversation history should still be there. So, and that's what's really impressive about this, where I said, what brand of laptop is this? The laptop brand shown in the image is Toshiba. You can clearly see the Toshiba logo displayed in the bottom center of the laptop screen. You can't. It says Quasmio. It does not say Toshiba anywhere in this, which is what is kind of, like, curious about this, I guess we could say. So here it is. I have like a folder of random stuff I use to test these vision models. And if we look at this, this does, oh, it says Toshiba right there. So it is basically reading from an image that I am downsizing when it's sent to it to be 512 max pixels. It, it's reading Toshiba, which is just not something I really expected it to. Here's a photo of myself. I'll say, who is this person? I'm afraid I can't identify specific individuals and images. Ah, uh, a man with short dark hair and a round face. Okay. He's smiling at the camera. He's, <laughs> he's wearing a gray quarter zip. The man appears to be in a room with various electronic equipment and vintage computers visible in the background without more context. Okay, the face isn't round. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good. All right, so... <laughs> It properly adhered to my anger in responsing. Okay, let's just do a general chat without an image. Tell me a joke. Okay, the capitalization was screwed up, but it'll probably do the stupid Adam joke. Oh, why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. This is a novel one that I've not actually seen from an AI before, so that is good. Now, I was reading a bit more about the architecture of these liquid models. I almost typed clear here. I'm like tapped out. <laughs> I need some sleep, I think. So basically, they were saying that the training data split, I think, because there's a base model for the like language portion of it, to put it simply. I think code only made up around 5% of the training data, so it's very likely not going to be any good at coding. But <laughs> let's... uh Probably not going to work, and this is very out of scope in terms of a use case for a model like this, but so be it. I do also want to note interesting a number guessing game and it actually did it that claude put these like weird little like advertisement snippets of the model here i did not do that so i'm not but claude did make this nice and fancy looking so and it will just come to me as a 63 okay oh, that sucks oh hey this actually does work okay the script quit before i um got to guess so basically you can only get it right or win the game by getting it in one try which is perhaps you would have about a 1% chance of doing, but so far, not bad at all. All right, this will be interesting and probably something that once again is outside of the scope. So here's a random trading chart of Dogecoin, and I basically want to ask it to come up with a trading strategy based on this image, as that may be somewhat interesting. All right, so it <laughs> I mean, it understood that this is a screenshot from TradingView. It did unfortunately seemingly read these timestamps as actual dollar figures, but that is okay. And then it just, okay, use a moving average, which is probably like some Investopedia 101 advice. But overall, it did actually understand enough about the image to give us a bit of pertinent information. Maybe not something you'd want to follow to acquire resources, but not bad. And I do want to note, you can follow up. So what currency is this? Basically, the way I had to get this working in Gradio is it can't just show the image in line for multi-turn conversations without glitching out. So this camera emoji is actually representative of the image that we sent to it. So we can kind of just make note of that so this chat doesn't look confusing. The Japanese... No. Okay, not necessarily. 
But this model's, I mean, it picked up the Toshiba, so I'm going to almost make sure I'm not the one. No, okay. Maybe I will just uncheck the resize to 512 by 512. And I want to try the trading image again, because if we can try it directly with a smaller size versus a larger size, and then see what difference we have, it could be pretty cool. Cool, so it did actually seem like that's going to work. I just unchecked the resize. I didn't touch any of the sliders for the tokens. Okay, now this totally did under this is a significantly more intricate result just based off of the first response thing I see right here, where it understands those were actually timestamps and not prices. Set a stop loss. Okay, this indicates a bullish market sentiment. There's an upward trend from 20 to 22 15. Let's just go ahead and take a peek at this again so we can cross reference some of these answers. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe not, but it did understand that, like, it did properly read the prices right here, so this is our target to take profit, enter the trade, monitor the trend, risk management, and then these are all more kind of, like, generic advice pieces you would get based on the observed trend and recent price action, so this totally did fetch far more detail from the image. Basically, we can go ahead and try to see if it can transcribe this Python script in verbatim. And keep in mind, I don't have the 512 by 512 box checked, so it will be slower but more detailed. Let me open back up the GPU monitor. <laughs> I'm not going to test that. It did kind of do it better than I thought it would and faster. I don't know that that is exactly correct, but <laughs> it tried. So now we're going to go ahead and test the smaller version of this model, which is, of course, the 450 million parameter variant. Beyond that, I am using the newly uploaded GGUF for this, which does actually work with Llama.cpp, which is how it is going to be working with Bob right here in the Raspberry Pi 5. And beyond that, I'm using it at Q8 quantization just to try to get it a bit smaller and more performant. Now, I should note that Bob has been updated since you last saw him to be using an 8 gigabyte variant of the Raspberry Pi 5 being that I needed a little more performance and there is a Raspberry Pi camera right here so when I press the start button there is a kind of specific phrase that will initiate it to take a photo because beyond that you can just generically chat with it if you want but if you say the phrase then it takes the photo and responds what it sees so we will do that real quick what do you see so basically right now it's just pointing at like a shelf on my wall that has a laser blaster I made this may not be what's in the photo but so it sees this and then like not much else but I will be interested in seeing because keep in mind this is a very small model at a QA quantization so the image shows a person's hand holding a red and white device with a black handle the device appears to be a specialized tool or instrument possibly used for a specific task or application it has a rectangular shape with a lid that can be lifted revealing a red interior with black grid-like patterns. The device is resting on a black surface, which could be a table or countertop. The background is white, creating a stark contrast with the red and black components of the tool. So like we can see right there, that's really not bad. And aside from the direct lighting at my face, everything else in the room is not really very lit up. So it's just kind of impressive. All right, so the implementation I have of this running on the Raspberry Pi is uh, quite experimental, which is a mask to say it does not work very well right now. It's basically like you have to start the script and then you can use it once and it works very well. But then if you try to continuously use it for like a conversational or multi-image testing, uh, it starts to fall apart quite quickly. But with that, I will say just based off of some of the actual performance that I've seen with the smaller variant of this model, it is really quite impressive. And truly, because I wasn't able to get as much testing done with Bob as I would have liked, I think maybe what we're going to do is just go ahead and quickly modify the actual web script that we have right here to use the smaller of the two models. And then we can actually test the non-quantized 450 million parameter variant, which is right here. So truly, and because I will put the script up on GitHub as a gist for anyone who wants to play with it, if you do want to go ahead and use a different model or the smaller variant of this, basically all you would do is open the script as we see right here and find where the model is actually being pulled. So I suppose here's what I'll do. I'll comment out, I'll put them both in and I'll comment one out so then it's more easy to actually go ahead and use either of them. And then... I'll comment out the big one for now. 
So basically, if we just go ahead now and change this, so I will end this, and then we'll run the script one more time. It will go ahead and now download the 450 million parameter variant of the model, and then once it loads in, we will actually be able to test this as well on probably some of the same images, since unfortunately this did not <laughs> work out as well as I had hoped, especially considering the large amount of time that I put into actually getting this working on the Pi 5. So with that, let's just go ahead and reload this, and this is now using the 450 million parameter variant of the model, as we can also see by the large decrease in VRAM utilization. So let's just just ask it about the Toshiba Quasmio once more. And look how fast that response appears. I mean, obviously this wouldn't, this is like a borderline edge device, not really, because it has a dedicated 8 gig video card, but it really just, like, the speed is quite good. And I will say on the Raspberry Pi, when I don't have the whole text-to-speech, speech-to-text stack, this thing runs very, very fast if you're just using it like to chat with or for text-based queries where it responds in text or images where it responds in text. And we can see right here, this is cool. And it's not as detailed as the larger one, but still, considering the large decrease in size and resource needed for this, it is quite impressive. I will just give it the same trading chart and we'll go ahead and see what it makes of that. Okay, so again, it didn't necessarily do as good of a job. Um, it was kind of making up some figures right here, but it did do a decent enough job to understand that it like is a trading chart. I think the last thing I'll do with this very small one is just send it the photo of myself in which I do not have a round face and just ask it who is in this person, who is in this picture. Now my guess is this model is probably... <laughs> oh, okay, well that is... <laughs> it's that the person in this image is Steve, which is kind of funny considering the Steve's PC repair test is a favorite of myself. A well-known American actor and comedian, he's sitting at a desk in what appears to be his office, smiling warmly at the camera. His short brown hair and friendly demeanor are a characteristic of his public persona. He's been a prominent figure in comedy for decades, known for his distinctive voice and comedic timing. Not bad. Totally incorrect, but more flattering than the previous result generated by the 1.6B, which basically called me fat. <laughs> so with that, I don't really have too much else to say. I mean, obviously, you don't need a graphics card to run these. You can run them on CPU, especially the 450 million parameter one. So this is something that is very testable by oneself. And beyond that, the Llama CPP implementation was just recently released for these. So that means you can go ahead and actually use these GGUFs and play with them in a more simple way than having to use it. Kind of how I was doing it right here where we use it with transformers and things like that. So with that, that is probably going to conclude what will be a shorter and probably more over the place video on the Liquid Foundation Model Vision Language Models. Um, they're very cool. I will say the biggest takeaway for me is the speed. They're extremely fast and based off of some of the tests I've done with other vision models which are significantly larger, they seem to perform quite well in terms of actually picking out detail and images and things like that. Obviously this is a smaller sample size but I was going ahead and playing with this with Bob prior to this just testing and trying to get it working so I had a lot of experience in seeing how it did with the Raspberry Pi camera right here and it did a great job of actually picking up on things and that was a Q8 quant of the 450 million parameter one. So with that, that's going to wrap up the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to subscribe and then leave them. And yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for watching.